Not all true 911 calls are about crimes or health scares. Sometimes, they're freak accidents that could never have been predicted. Several emergency calls were made by residents begging to be rescued when a condo in Miami caved in. A devastating total of 98 people lost their lives in the tragic June 2021 condo collapse. How many county police and fire? Yes, was ma'am, uh, it, seemed like a, it seemed like here it was an earthquake here, um, the garage. Every, yes, ma'am. It seemed like something uh, underground, everything exploded down at 8777 Collins. Okay, Avenue. Do we have a call already? We have help on the way out there. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Holy What's, yeah, hold on. Okay. I'm trying to track him. He's mapping at 88th Street in Collins Avenue. Hurry up, hurry up. He's, a big he's, he's reporting a collapse in a garage. 877 Collins Avenue. 8th <laughs> Garage. Okay. What is the phone number? Eight seven seven Avenue. You're spelling from. Okay, sir. Tell me exactly what happened, <laughs> sir. I'm sorry. What's going on? Tell me exactly what happened. I don't know. There's a lot of smoke going on. I can't see anything right now. You see you smoke? Get out of here. <laughs> sir. Where are we going? We gotta go. We gotta keep going. Hello. Oh my God. Hello. Yes, I'm here. What are you What are you seeing? I can't see nothing but smoke. Get the fuck out of here. Oh my god. Ma'am, the operator is oh asking if anyone are injured. Oh my god. That's okay. We, wow. We have him on the way out there. Okay, ma'am, I need you to focus on the operator. It looks like 8777, Collins Avenue. What do you see, sir? Because we're getting a lot of calls over there. What are you seeing? A, a very large building collapsed. Like the building next to us is gone. How does the building is gone? So basically, I started hearing. Uh, 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 I woke up because I was hearing some noise. I couldn't understand what was happening. I looked out outside and I saw the patio, patio area started sinking down. What started so, sinking? Uh, the patio area, the pool area, uh-huh. the pool area starts uh-huh. sinking down. Okay. We do show police and so, paramedics are on the way over there now. They should be there by now. Yeah, but there are many, many stores of the building that went down. The building just went to the sinkhole. So okay. there will be many, many people there. Okay. Okay. We have police and paramedics so, on the way there. Are you, are you still in your apartment or are you on the ground? No, I'm on the ground outside on the same area. I saw the whole building just going out, not whole, many stores going under the ground. Okay. We're in the same uh, distance, but... Okay, we got, we got police and paramedics on the way there, okay? They're on the way, okay? Avenue. 8777 Collins Avenue? Yes. Okay, um, okay, you're in your apartment right now? Yes, but half the building's gone. Okay, are you able to get out through the staircase? No, no, the staircase is closed. Okay, well, what, what is your apartment number? One, I'm in the balcony right now. you got to try to get... Try. We can't find the exit. We're in the stairs, but we, we don't know which stairs we can get out. Okay, you need to find your closest stairs wherever you can to exit the building, okay? What side of the building are you on? What side of the building? What floor? We're, we're on the second floor. There's people yelling, saying they're stuck. Yes. On the, on the part of the building that collapsed, they keep yelling, and it's... Okay. Uh, have... We have several people on the way over there to assist. I let them know the location you're at. Okay? Okay. Okay, sir. What's your name? We... No, what, what, is it safe for us to stay here? I don't know what structures around you, sir. If you find a way to get out, please do so. Okay. The, the entire uh, garage is flooding. Okay. We're going back to the second floor where we were. Okay. We're going to the southeast side of the building. I have other people with me now. We're now about eight or nine besides the three more in my family. Uh, we're going to try to knock on the door so we can have access to the balcony. Okay. Side of the street. Okay. Nobody opening. All right, let me know. 
There's people in the rubble yelling, by the way. Okay. Just so you know. We have several, several units that are already on scene. The basement is flooded. We just walked. It was only about two feet deep. Okay. Yeah, we're walking on top of the rubble. We're outside now. We you made, made it out completely, we're your whole family? Area. Okay. Yeah. Exit completely. Even get away from the pool. If anything more collapses, I don't want it to hit your family. Ma'am, are you still there? I'm with you still, sir. Yes. Okay, now I'm walking by the pool. Okay. The pool. You have your entire family with you, right? They're ahead of me. I had to help a lady. Okay. Uh, I, was, uh, I got her with me. Uh, okay. I'm in the open area with the pool. Okay. Completely exit towards the beach side. I'm sorry? Go towards the beach side, okay? Completely exit. Yeah, there's, there's some other people here. Some other neighbors here. Let me know. Let look for people. We think the roof collapsed in the building. A bunch of us are in the garage, but we cannot get out. And we're going back up to our apartment, but some of the hallways are blocked, and there's water coming in through the bottom, through the garage. Okay, so you said that the entire roof has collapsed on top of the building? We we don't know exactly. Okay, if you don't know what's going on, ma'am, you need to stay somewhere where you are safe, okay? Well, that's don't go walking. We get out what we well, are. don't go walking all over the building if the roof has yeah. collapsed. We have we're help on the way there already. We're going back to our apartment, but there are a lot of people inside the building. My sister lives there, and the apartment building apparently um, uh, completely, um, I don't know, something happened to it, and half of the building's not there anymore, but she is alive, and she's there. She's in apartment. Apartment. Correct. She, she, um, if, if somebody can get her out through the balcony. The okay, we have, the fire, we have several fire departments out there. I'll let them know that she's in unit, okay? The corner is the corner facing Collins Avenue. There's two people there. They're alive, but they, 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 there's no other, they can't get out because there's no building on the other side of their apartment. Yeah, I know. We have the fire department on. on we have several fire departments on. Okay, but I'll let yes, them know. I know. Okay? She's apartment in the corner on the eighth floor. She's there. There's two people. Please. On June 24th, 2021, a portion of the 12-story condominium in Surfside, Florida, called Champlain Tower South, collapsed at around 1.30 a.m. The collapse of the building near Miami Beach has been documented as one of the most deadly structural collapses in U.S. history. The disaster prompted officials across South Florida to study residential buildings for signs of poor construction or structural weaknesses. The first to cave in was the area residents referred to as the pool deck, which rested atop a large concrete structure that also served as the ceiling to the underground parking garage. A routine forensic report conducted in 2018 documented severe structural damage to the concrete slab, mainly caused by poor drainage and waterproofing. Rainwater that should have run along the slant gathered in cracks and debris in the concrete structure, causing dampness and damage to slowly deteriorate the concrete, causing it to crumble in on itself eventually. This issue was well known in the complex, and there were even plastic pipes installed into the ceiling to divert the water elsewhere, but that did not stop the problem. The water also had severe corrosion to the steel that was upholding the structure. Seven minutes later, the rest of the building collapsed. There is speculation surrounding how the concrete slab at the establishment's bottom managed to trigger the rest of the collapse. Still, one theory is that it fell. The concrete structure punched through the ground floor of the building, causing the building to crumble. This is sometimes referred to as catenary action. Another major issue was the concrete columns in the parking garage itself, which did not have enough reinforcement. A recovery and cleanup operation including officials such as firefighters and forensic authorities assisted in clearing the rubble and debris to rescue and recover individuals who were in the building when it collapsed. 98 people lost their lives as a result of the disaster. The other half of the building that remained standing was taken down as a precaution to ensure that no other people would be harmed. A 20-year-old junior at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, died after participating in a fraternity boxing match to raise money for Center Ring Boxing, a youth boxing club. Nathan Valencia participated in Kappa Sigma's Fight Night event. The boxing match raised money for Center Ring Boxing, a youth club. In an Instagram post, Kappa Sigma said, 
Valencia's match was the main event. Hello? Fire department, what is the address? Hi, um, what's the address? What's the address? Um, we're at the, we're at the Sahara Event Center, the roller, or the roller hockey ring. Um, we need medics here, like, right now. Okay, right now. What's the phone number you're calling from? Tell me the exactly address. what happened. Um, so it's, we are hosting a fight night for a fraternity charity, and something happened, and we're not sure what happened. There's a fight that broke out, and one of the fighters, like, actually got injured. Um, the uh, address is... Okay. All right. So, and so I just want to make sure, like, when you said, oh, you guys are holding a, a fight event, this wasn't, like, a an assault, correct? No. Okay. No, not an assault. I'm 911. All right. Are you with the patient right now? Yes. How yes, old is the yes. patient? Um. All right. I have not already started. Okay. Just a couple questions. Okay. You wait right now. Um. I'm. I'm okay. I'm. Okay. All right. Perfect. I have help already started. Okay. Just a couple okay. questions. Is okay. there any serious bleeding? Hey. Is there any serious bleeding? I'm on the phone with nine one one. Just to know. Did you want to come along? Uh, no, I think we'll be okay. Okay, sounds good. Say it again. Is there any serious bleeding? All right, is he completely alert? All right, so I have paramedics already on the way, okay? Just stay on the line. I'll tell you exactly what to do next. Just make sure not to... Do not move him unless he is in danger. Do not splint any injuries, okay? There's about, there's about, we have, we have it condensed. Like, okay. He, All right. He's in the ring. We have only, ten, we only have like eight people here in the ring. Um, everyone else is out. Okay. All yes, right. We have nurses here, but we need like real medical. Uh, I understand. And they're already on the way, okay? They are coming to you guys, lights and sirens. Um, okay, just make sure you nothing, know how long? nothing, well, they're coming lights and sirens, so it's just going to be a short time between, between, uh, when they get there, okay? They're not too far from you guys, just nothing for him to eat or drink, it might make him sick or cause okay. further problems. Take that dip, get him water, like lots of water. No, 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 do not. No water, no water. And do no. not, and then do not move him unless it's absolutely necessary, okay? Okay, okay, so no, he can't. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stay on the line with you, okay, as long as I can. Just watch them closely and look for any changes. I'm on, I'm on, I'm with 911. Okay. I can't get off the phone, I'm with 911. All right, ma'am, can you confirm with me, is he breathing or is he not breathing? All right. All right. You can't leave without me. All right, just stay with me, okay? Okay, I'm with you. All right, and then any COVID symptoms prior to this? Start to suppress any or cough? We're crazy. Baby? Perfect. They're we're we're currently evacuating the event center right now, and it's just the people who are essential to this situation. Okay. All right, perfect. It looks like the paramedics should almost be arriving, okay? Okay, thank you so much. I'll stay on the phone. All right, take a look at him. Is he still awake? Say it again, sorry. Okay. still awake. And how is his breathing? Okay. 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 Um, All right. It looks like the ambulance is there. Okay. They're going to grab okay, their Okay. Ambulance is here. They're going to grab their equipment and they'll be right in. I need you to tell me as soon as they're inside with you. Okay? Yes. I will. I will. I will. I will totally tell you that. Thank you. They're here. The term okay. actually here. All right. Perfect. Wait, wait, no, not you. Sorry. Not you. Not you. Not you. Talking to the people who are Oh, okay. They just, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. Oh my god. Did he get hit with something or? He 
he is the main event of the fight that happened, the last event. Honest, if we're being honest, I was in the IT section, and then um, a citizen fight kind of broke out, but everyone's fine there. And then all of a sudden, he's on the floor. So. Oh, okay. Marissa, I wait to call it off. <laughs> Why did I have to be the person to call 911? Because you're the most calm one to do it for me. <laughs> Sorry. You're right. Oh, it's okay. It probably would have been better ever. Let me know when they're inside with you, okay? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm on the phone with 911. Yes, I'm here. Yes. Yes. Let me know as soon as you see the ambulance coming in. Okay, the paramedics are here. All right, perfect. I'll go ahead and let you go, okay? They'll take good care of them. Okay, thank right, you, thank you. So much. Bye. Okay, bye. The event took place off campus. According to university president Keith Whitfield, Nathan collapsed soon after his fight. He was then taken to a hospital. In an interview, Whitfield said, We are shocked and heartbroken as we mourn the loss of one of our own. Tragically, Valencia died on November 23, 2021, four days before his 21st birthday. According to the Clark County Coroner's Office, he died from blunt force head trauma. The coroner ruled his death as a homicide. However, the Metropolitan Police Department said they would not pursue any criminal charges. The police department noted that when someone dies in the hands of another person, it does not always have legal implications. Valencia's death has raised accusations from his family. I kept asking him, are you going to be protected? Are you going to be wearing a headgear? And he said, yes, of course, this is for charity. So he was saying, mom, you worry too much. This is, you know, this is just a charity event. So come to find out he was going to be the main event. And I was like, how did this happen? But he was like telling me, he kept um, telling us that, no, this is for people who didn't have prior boxing experience because he never was a boxer. He truly was just doing this because it was for a charity. The family claimed to have confirmed from multiple sources that there were no paramedics or medical personnel of any kind at this event. They also claimed that the referee present for the event was drinking alcohol and appeared to have had no professional training, no license as required by the Nevada Athletic Commission. In a statement, the family's attorney said they will leave no stone unturned to determine how a 20-year-old ended up in a school-sanctioned amateur fight that cost him his life. Valencia was remembered on his 21st birthday. Every time we would hang out, we would never have to talk about my problems because every time I was with him, it felt like I had none. We felt like they always just went straight out the window and his positivity, his charisma, his personality, his loyalty was unmatched. So every memory I have with him was memorable and I'll cherish forever. Members of Sigma Alpha Epsilon also remembered him in an Instagram post, saying Valencia showed us nothing but love and will continue to do so from up above. A small plane crash of a Cirrus SR-22 in Gaithersburg in 2009 was later dubbed the Miracle on Mallory Place. The plane was destroyed after striking trees, but the pilot miraculously walked away and no one on the ground was injured. Several neighbors dialed 911 to report the crash. Health community? Yes. Okay. There's rescue. Go ahead and talk to them. Uh, uh, yes, uh, airplane just went down. I think he had a parachute on him, uh, a guy parachuting. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, the townhouse is across from like uh, T.W. Perry and Flower Hill, right up the road, uh, Stopper School Road. Do you have a uh, intersection or something? It's Mallory. I believe it's Mallory and Stopper School Road. Mallory? Mall Mallory and Stopper, Stopper School Road. Okay, hold on. Oh, my God. Uh, was it a big plane or a small plane? It didn't look like a real big plane. I want to say it's the smallest plane I've ever seen. Uh, medium size. All right, what's your name? But we could hear the engine. Uh, what's your noise. name? Uh, so did the plane explode? We could hear this noise, and my husband and I were here in the living room. I said, what is that? That's, that's a funny noise, you know, and uh, kind of loud. And and I said, it sounds like one of the, a plane. Something's happening to a plane. And I looked out here, and we could see it coming down over the trees. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, there it went. It went right down at these townhouses 
uh, right before. Uh, you see any smoke or fire? I don't. We don't see any fire. No, but we can see the um, the the. I guess he must have had somebody parachuting or something behind him or parachute. I don't know. I see a like a parachute type of thing, strong from the tree. It's a uh, orange and white stripe. So the plane went down, and I guess somebody, I guess he had somebody behind her. I don't know. Maybe he tried to, uh, you know, get out of the plane and parachute out of the plane. I don't know, because I didn't see it happen, you know, from the very start. I just saw it as it was coming down through the trees. So I don't know if the pilot tried to, you know, if it's his okay. parachute, if he was, you know, somebody was, I don't know. I don't know what happened. But there definitely is a plane that just went down. Okay. All right, we're going to send some help out there. If you have any more information, call us back. Okay, sure, yeah. Thank I you. Some sugar right now. Bye. Fire and ambulance. Hello, uh, there's my uh, 8135 Snocker School Road. Uh, got a small aircraft just came down in the uh, across the street from the nursery here at Snocker School Road in Flower Hill. Okay. Uh, Mallory, Mallory Place, Snocker School Road. It's right on Mallory and Snocker. Okay, you said right. So is it near Terry Laurel Lane? Uh, just past Terry Laurel. It's come on up Snoffer School Road, uh, left on Mallory Place, M-A-L-L-O-R-Y. Okay, and your name? It's Mike. Hurry up. Okay, sir, we're on the way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, a, plane, a plane crashed on Mallory. It's oh my God. School Road? Yes, and yes. Snoffer School Road. Yes, we're on the way there. I'm sorry? We are on the way there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Fire and ambulance. Uh, yes, I just, uh, there was an airplane, I think, a couple of people had crashed. Yes, we had that. Is there a Upper school road. Uh-huh. Do you see and any smoke or fire, sir? Is he on this thing? I'm sorry? The fuel is leaking on the airplane bat. Okay. Like it is pouring all over the road. Okay, and is, is there any smoke or fire? No smoke, no fire. Operator's okay. Okay, we're on the way there. All right. Thank you. An angel must have been watching over the pilot of a Cirrus SR-22 on March 15, 2009, who escaped serious and even fatal injuries thanks to an emergency parachute inside the plane. The pilot had reportedly lost control of the aircraft shortly after takeoff, causing it to veer and crash into the trees below. The small plane crashed on Mallory Place about 100 feet west of Snoofer School. Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Units responded to the intersection of Mallory Place and Snoofer School Road in the Flower Hill community of Gaithersburg, Maryland, for a small plane down. The plane had been destroyed, but miraculously, there were no casualties. The pilot initially refused treatment, but he was taken to Suburban Hospital for evaluation due to experiencing chest pain, likely from a seatbelt. In what was to become known as the Summer of the Shark, two children were attacked on the same day. Both kids were in shallow water on the same Oak Island beach in North Carolina in June 2015, and they each lost an arm. The first attack happened around 4.15 p.m., and the victim was 12-year-old Kirsten Yao from Asheboro, a city about 200 miles inland from the beach where the incident occurred. Her injuries were so severe that an airlift was requested to get her to the hospital. Cancer status is Karen. Karen, this is John. The 911 center runs like, can you advise the status on the airline? Yeah, we're getting ready to launch him right now. Okay, the left arm is completely missing and also a bite to the left, left leg, 13 year old, weak pulse. Okay. Your left arm is completely missing. We call some what was in it? Also, bite to the left leg. Bite to the left leg. Okay. Okay, you're lifting off now. Um, in just a few minutes. All right. Any, anytime they'll be lifting. All right, all right, thanks. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Kirsten's mother, Lori Yao, told WWAY3 News she was swimming, felt a bump to her leg, reached back, and realized what was happening. She punched the shark three times, and the next thing she knew, she had been pulled underwater either by a wave or the shark. She isn't sure which. When she was able to swim above water, she realized he was gone, and the only thing she could think was to get to the shore before it came back. In a twist of fate that likely saved the 12-year-old's life, Marie Hildreth, a paramedic with Novit Health in Charlotte, was vacationing with her family on the beach. 
and upon hearing shouts of shark, she ran to help. The shark had bitten Kirsten's left hand off completely and had taken a chunk out of her left leg. In a news release from Novant Health, the off-duty EMT said, it was much worse than I expected, adding that the girl had severe arterial bleeding. Hildreth used strings from a boogie board and guy ropes from a beach tent to make tourniquets to stem the bleeding. Her brother-in-law, a Maryland police officer, and her younger brother, who was then an aspiring firefighter, assisted her until the Oak Island Fire and Rescue Department arrived. One of the first on-duty paramedics at the scene, Tracy Carnes, told CNN, the outpouring of help from the bystanders was amazing. Yao had been in the water around the Ocean Crest Pier, which is a popular fishing spot. When then-mayor, Betty Wallace, informed her community of the attack via Facebook, some local residents began to speculate that the shark had been attracted to the shallow waters because of bait thrown during chumming. Chumming is the practice of throwing small fish and meat into an open water to draw and then more easily catch other marine life. Because of the danger of attracting sharks, chumming is illegal in some U.S. states. Less than 90 minutes later, about two miles further along the beach, 16-year-old Hunter Treshel from Colorado Springs was swimming when he was attacked, and a shark had bitten off his arm above the elbow. Brunswick County, now all the time for your emergency. Oh my gosh! Hello? There's somebody there! Hey, there's somebody there! There's somebody there! There's somebody there! There's somebody there! Okay, where do we go? Okay, ma'am, I need for you to calm down. I'm having a hard time hearing you. What access are you near? Oh, we're at 55th Street. 55th? Yes, ma'am. His arm is gone. Okay. Are you near the subject right now? He's right down for me. Okay, what is your name? My name is Renee Harris. Renee Harris? Yes, ma'am. Okay, stay on the line one minute. I gotta get help on the way to you, okay? Okay. Okay, if you can, how old is the subject? He's an old like a teenager. Okay, can you get near them and ask how old he is? Can I what? Can you get near them and ask him how old he is? Okay. They are. We've got somebody like four people. 
Okay, like I said, ma'am, we've got several units on the way. If he should get worse in any way, give us a call back immediately for further instructions. So we got several units on the way to you. They're here right now. All right, thank you. Have a good day. Similarly, bystanders were paramount in providing Treshel emergency first aid until first responders took over. Witness Randy Milligan was one of the people who helped. Randy Milligan charged in to help. Tore off my shirt and I tied it around his arm and, and I had a, he was screaming, is this real and is this a movie? The teen kept screaming while Milligan, along with other beachgoers, laid him on the sand and tried to calm him down. At the same time, another man tied his belt around Hunter's arm to stop the bleeding. When Treshel was attacked, Yell was still on the beach being tended by Oak Island Fire and Rescue Department. Some of the same first responders treated both victims at the beach before both victims were airlifted to New Hanover Regional Medical Center in Wilmington. They both arrived in critical conditions and were rushed into surgery. Yao's left arm was amputated just below the elbow, and surgeons did their best to treat her severely injured leg. Despite what we see in movies such as Jaws, it's not typical to shut down the beach or evacuate the waters after a shark attack, so the beach remained open. The Brunswick County Sheriff's Office sent its helicopter, Air One, to monitor the coastline and keep a lookout for sharks in the area. The spokesperson for the Brunswick County Sheriff's Office, Emily Flax, said, They're keeping a careful watch on the shore, making sure if they do see a shark that they alert the town. They spotted one shark, possibly a bull or tiger shark that looked about seven to eight feet long, and a local spotted and photographed another shark in the area. Not surprisingly, following the attacks, the beach was usually quiet. The attacks happened on Sunday the 14th, and Treshel was released from the hospital less than a week later on Thursday the 19th. Meanwhile, Yao was transferred to UNC Medical Center in Chapel Hill. Her parents, Brian and Lori Yao, released a statement saying, she has a long road to recovery that will include surgeries and rehabilitation, but her doctors at UNC expect she will keep her leg and for that, we are grateful. They went on to thank those involved. We want to thank the Good Samaritans and emergency responders whose clear heads and quick actions saved Kirsten's life. We also thank her extraordinary doctors and nurses in Wilmington and Chapel Hill. This has been an extraordinarily traumatic event for our entire family. Over the summer of 2015, eight people had encounters with sharks in North Carolina. Postdoctoral marine biology researcher Chuck Bangley theorized that the unusual number of shark encounters could have been due to temperature changes in the water caused by heavy rains. He told the Associated Press, a lot of marine life are cued by temperature shifts, or they are cued by their food moving around. Six months after they each lost a limb, the two shark attack survivors met in person. Since her attack, Yao has returned to the beach but stayed out of the water. She told the AP, I still enjoy walking on the beach. I just don't care to go in water where I can't see what is coming. The now teenager was fitted with a myoelectric hand. The incredible device is an artificial limb that controls the electrical signals generated by their muscles. She underwent multiple surgeries to repair and rebuild the tissue damage to her leg. Although Yao had to give up playing the saxophone, she took up playing the trumpet instead. In 2021, Kirsten Yao began college at UNC Chapel Hill. Treshel also returned to the beach and was given a prosthetic arm, but he prefers not to use it. Just six months after his shark encounter, the 16-year-old was offered the opportunity to get back in the water with sharks as part of the Discovery Channel's Shark Week. He explained why he chose to do so to Good Morning America. So initially, it was you know, something I wasn't too keen on because as you said, it was like six months later. Um, but as I began to think about it, I thought, I started thinking about it as, this is not so much getting back in the water with the shark that bit my arm off, but more so it's like this great experience that not everybody gets to have. Um, and so that's just kind of how I viewed the whole thing. Uh, it was great. It was a bit kind of scary at first. I mean, as you'd expect, um, but that was like maybe the first two or three minutes. And after that, I really began to appreciate like Wow, these are some really cool animals, and getting to see them up close is really awesome. After high school, Treshel went to Grinnell College in Iowa, where he studied political science and economics.
Ten-year-old Jamie Harris, along with other children, played near Hampton train tracks on October 12, 2012, when a tragic accident occurred. Eyewitness James Slater immediately called 911 to report the horrific scene. 911, where's your emergency? Um, I called yesterday about a bunch of kids that jumped on a train, a moving train at the dead end of Bellwood, and they're back today doing it again. And the train's moving now? The train's moving, and the kids are jumping and hanging on the ladders. Okay, what's, what's the 100 block there on Bellwood? Do you know it? The what? The 100 block on Bellwood? Um, it's Bellwood and Tyler, and that's the dead end. All right, tell me what the children look like. Um, it's like four or five um, African American kids. They're about under the age of ten, and they're all jumping on this this moving train. And there's one kid screaming right now. I'm gonna go and see if something happens. Can you give me any clothing? Um, they're all up behind the bushes up by the train now, so I can't really see them. I hear one kid screaming though. I should probably go check. Okay. Yeah, that's a better description than mine, my address. Are they okay, sir? No, I think someone's screaming. Oh, no. no. Oh, my God, he lost his leg. What? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, That's an amputation on a leg. i got to get this. Hold on a second, sir. Okay, this is oh, this bad. Okay, listen. You gotta get somebody Bella and Tyler, Brian. I need to know how old the child is, sir. He's gotta be about twelve. I don't know. He's he's on the ground and he's lost his leg. Okay, sir. Do we have you have a belt or anything that you can do a tourniquet with? No, no. I've got I've got babies in my house right now. Okay. Can you get someone out there to help you? I think his dad's out here right now. I, <laughs> I need to keep him still. What is? Tell me what's happening around you. His dad's calling a uh, paramedic right now, and then we're getting ready to get another yeah, call. Back. Stay back. Oh my God. Okay, sir. Listen, we need to get a tourniquet of some sort. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Okay, we need to find a belt or a piece of rope or something that we can wrap around the end of his leg to try to maintain the bleeding. Can somebody help me look for that? I didn't see anything under trauma. I don't have anything. My neighbor's going to get a belt. Okay. Guys, you guys got to stay back. Can somebody have a hotline and ask the internet Guys, stay back. I just need to know if we can turn to his leg to stop the bleeding. Stay back. Stay back. Okay, sir, that part, sir. Yes. Listen to me. Did, where do you see the part, other part of his leg? I, his dad's up on the tracks looking for it, I think. Okay. We went and placed it in a clear plastic bag if we can find it, okay? Uh-huh. Okay, we need to try to calm the other kids down if we can, okay? Okay. And we also would like to get a blanket and try to keep them from going into shock. If we can find somebody that can get a blanket. I'm trying to get people to help. Okay, thank you. You're doing a good job. I'm sorry. I've got people coming in. Okay. That's the medic coming now, right? Yep. Okay. Do you see them? Yes, the, the, the two officers are down here. Right? Okay, so they see you, sir? They see me outside the road. All right, I just want to make sure that they can be able to find the child, okay? 
Costner's got uh, I'm pulling out the pies right now. Okay, wonderful. I'm going to hang up. What's your name, sir? James. James, you did a good job. Okay, sir. Thank you for calling. You did a great job. Okay, James? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. The emergency operator offered Slater emergency first aid instruction, and Slater asked other bystanders to bring the supplies needed for the boy's care. The EMTs arrived before the supplies could be brought to the scene. According to the police, the lower part of the boy's legs was severed after getting caught underneath a train. Slater, who had seen the children playing on the tracks and trains at least a week earlier, said, I was always scared something bad was going to happen. The one time I came out here and I tried talking to them and I gave them a, like the old man, like disapproval look and they just kind of flipped me off and I was like, oh. He pled with them to refrain from their dangerous activities before calling 911 both Saturday and Sunday. I was on the phone and she was asking age groups and I said, wait a minute. And then it was like these awful, awful screams and tears and they were all running down saying he lost his leg. Slater told the Newport News Daily Press that the ordeal was an image I'll never be able to shake, adding that as horrific as this was, at least the kid didn't die. You don't get too many second chances when it comes to a train. Hi, Rachel. What's the location of your emergency? Sir. Can I help you? Sir, we have a, a couple of people who've tipped over in the Great Salt Lake. I've got them on the line. Okay. Go yeah, ahead and yeah. go ahead and let them know where you are, sir. You let them know? No, you you tell them. They're gonna. Where are you? Okay. You're on I-80. No, Hello? they're in the Great Salt Lake. They're out on the lake. Out on the lake. Their boat tipped over there near the marina. Salt Air Marina. We tipped over just north of Salt Air Marina, little northwest. Freezing. Boat tipped over. How many people are in the boat? Just two. What's your name? Jason, sir. Jason. Jason Can you Mary. see the marina from where you're at? Huh? Can you see the marina? I can. Jason. I can't hear you. Can you see the marina? Yeah, I can see the marina. I can see the marina from here. For what's like your cell phone out, number? Jason, what's your cell phone number? Jason. Hello? What's your cell phone number? What's your cell phone number? 864 2988. 2988? 864 2988. How many people were on the boat? Just two. Just me and the other guy. How old are you guys? Uh, 30. Are you 35, still in the water? Or are, you, are you guys in the water? We are in the water. We're going to drown here any minute now. We're having waves crash on top of us. You're just north of the marina? Yeah. You guys have life preservers on? A little northwest of the marina. You what? Just a little northwest of the marina. Can you, you can see the marina? Yeah, I can see it from here. Are you right by your boat? Yeah, I'm sitting on top of the boat, which is tipped over. You're sitting on other... top of your boat in the water? Yeah, the boat is flipped over on its belly. I'm sitting on the belly of it, and my friend's barely hanging on the front end of it. Right, we're going to get a hold of Parks and Rec, okay? Huh? We're going to try and get a hold of somebody out there at the marina. Okay. Helicopter something really fast. Okay, we're get, I've got my partner working on it from the other line. Do you guys have on life preservers? Huh? Do you guys have on life preservers? No. Nope. We do not. Okay, what's your friend's name? What? What's your friend's name? Aaron. Aaron? Yeah. Okay, we do have one of our parks and recreation guys on the line right now. We're trying to tell him where you're at. Okay. Are you, were you duck hunting or what were you doing out there? We were duck hunting, heading back to shore, heading back to the marina. It was getting choppy out here. And he says it was getting choppy and they were headed back to shore. You say we you were duck hunting? We were duck hunting.
Okay, we're getting somebody on the way to help you, okay? Okay. Someone's on the way. Are you guys floating towards the, the marina or are you floating back out? We're floating back out. We're kind of going, well, west. Wind's blowing west, but we're going west. We're like north, almost still north of the marina, though, but we're still we're getting blown to the west. To the west? Yeah. Okay. But we're still pretty much north of the marina, kind of northwest of it, barely. Okay, hang on just a second. We're still trying to get a hold of more people to get them out there. We're, we're behind Salt Air to the north. Behind the Salt Air and to the north. Salt Air Marina. There's a building. There's a building where all the concerts are. We're just west of that. What was that you just said? I can't feel my feet. My knees. You, you can't feel your knees? Not right now I can't. He can't feel his hands. All right. We've got help coming for you guys. Okay. Okay? Yeah, where's the concerts at? You what? Uh, concerts at Salt Air Concerts. We're north of that building. You're north of which building? So where they hold, where they hold the concerts at? Oh, where they held the concert at? We're at about a mile from that building. About a mile out. A mile north of it? You're a mile north of that building or a mile west? Yeah, out? a mile north of the, where they have the concerts, Salt Air Concerts. Okay. We do have a Parks and Rec guy in his boat headed out to you guys, okay? Okay. One of our officers from out there. Stay on the phone with me. I'm trying. Be on your air, Alex, Leslie. I can't. I've got waves crashing. I can't hear now. You what? Just wait a sec. I can't hear nothing. Okay. We're still coming. Okay. Okay, are you there? We're trying to get the latitude and longitude off your phone. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. All right, we're trying to get your location off your cell phone. We do have our parks guy coming to you. He was running out to his boat to come out there, okay? Okay, I'm a, I can't hear you. The wind's just howling out here. Okay. Not him. Okay. How you doing? How am I doing? Yeah. I'm freezing. All right, we're coming. He's okay. in his boat right now. He's on the radio. He's in his boat right now. He's on the radio. You what's that? I was telling my I was telling my okay. buddy what you just told me. Okay. He's the one that's hurting worse right here. What's right there? He's he's the one worst off. So I'm telling him what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Let him know that he's in his boat and he's asking us right now on the radio where you're at. They're much north of the salt air. Well, north and again. west. They're floating back out. Ooh. So cold. Okay, we do have the latitude and longitude coordinates off your cell phone. I can't hear you still. I can barely keep hearing right. your voice, but. Okay, we've got. Just go ahead and listen. I'll tell you. We've got the coordinates off your cell phone. So he's right. going to. We're on our way out to find you guys, and we'll get an ambulance started to help you out, too. Okay. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hang on just a second. We're he's getting out there. Now we're now we're a little bit west of the building now. You're a little bit west of the building now. Yeah, we keep moving west of the wind. But I bet we're a mile out, three quarters of a mile from the build from the building. From the shore, I'd say we're about I don't know, 500 yards, thousand yards maybe. About a thousand. What was that? About a thousand yards. We got to hang on. Yeah, he's almost there. You guys got to hang on. Tell him that. He's, he's almost here. Okay. Here comes some big waves. Okay, hang on tight. Huh? Hang on tight. He's on his way out. I can't. I don't see anybody. I know. It'll take him a while. You might not see him until he's right on top of you, so you got to hang on. All right? I... We're coming. Okay. He's headed out. So you got to hang on because he'll be there. We are trying. Okay. And I guess we've got people coming from the Salt Air and Tooele is sending people. So there's more than one person coming to help you.
Two men had been duck hunting on the Great Salt Lake when the wind picked up and capsized their boat, sending the men overboard six to eight inches in the cold water. Luckily, the men had a cell phone to call for help and a GPS that enabled them to tell dispatchers right where they were. One of the men managed to dial 911 and call for help. Kathy Jo Hall, the dispatcher on the call, guided the medical helicopter to find the two. Once Hall knew where to send rescuers, she offered encouragement until help arrived after about an hour. Both men were taken to the University of Utah Medical Center and were likely treated for hypothermia. State Park Ranger Kent Cummings commented on the risks of going out on the lake, saying, Had they not had that, we may still not have known where they are at, or even have known they were out there. So when you are boating, it's important to bring cell phones, let people know where you're going, wear your life jacket, and have a GPS. We got out to them quickly because they had those instruments with them. He also advises being wary of the weather when deciding to go out on the water, emphasizing that boating in bad weather is not a good idea. Emergency call operators advise the best thing anyone can do when calling 911 is to remain as calm as possible so they can send the help needed as quickly and efficiently as possible. In November 2008, a single-engine plane crashed into a home in Marshfield, Wisconsin, killing three people on the plane and generating several 911 calls about the incident. The three killed were a father and two sons. On yep. emergency. Crash in houses in Marshfield in Lincoln. What it does crash. What a plane. A plane crashed on 17th and Lincoln in houses in Marshfield. Oh my God! Right in the backyard. Oh, what? There's a house. A plane crashed on 17th Street, 17th Street, and in Divine, 17th and Divine. It's... Oh my God! 17th oh. and Divine, you said? Yes, yes. Okay. The deck is on fire. The deck is on fire on a house. We need an ambulance and a fire truck. I just slow down. Amy, we got a plane crash in Marshfield. Oh my God. Oh. Oh. You said 17th and Divine, correct? Yes. All right, hang on. Oh, my God. I don't know if there's... Is everybody else is getting? <laughs> okay, wow. Well, you saw the plane crash. Though. Yes, we, okay. we just, yeah. Marshfield, Marshfield Ambulance, yeah. Marshfield Fire. We got a report yes. of a plane crash. Plane crash, 17th and Divine. 17th and Divine. <laughs> All we've got for information at this time. <laughs> oh. Beginning 17th and Lincoln, 17th and Divine. Are you guys okay? We just saw. Yeah, we just called. They gave we Divine. Oh. Yeah, not, I'm not sure. First, they gave Lincoln, apparently being informed behind the airport. Yeah, we probably should get back. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, my God. All right. Can you, is there any? Did it hit the house? Did it hit land? No, it's the, the deck. It just hit the. It hit the deck. It hit the deck. That's okay. all it hit. But nothing of the house. Nothing. Not the house. Just the deck okay, on can fire. Can I get your name? My name is Rebecca McDowell. Oh my gosh, it's popping. Yeah. But Rebecca, what's your phone number? It's seven one five three zero five five two two zero. Okay. We got ambulance and fire and everybody on the way, so it's just okay. time. Okay. Thank okay. You. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> A small plane reportedly crashed in the backyard of a house in Marshfield on November 24th, killing the three passengers aboard the plane. The victims were identified as 41-year-old James Edward III, president of Green Bay Junior Gamblers, a youth hockey group, and owner of Thomas Electrical Services and his two young sons, 15-year-old James Edwards IV and 9-year-old Joshua Edwards. According to Cliff Watson, vice president of the Green Bay Junior Gamblers, the family reportedly lived in Marshfield, but Edwards flew his sons to hockey practice two or three times a week. Marshfield is located about 40 miles southwest of Wasau, Wisconsin. This crash is truly a tragedy for the Edwards family, Marshfield Police Chief Joe Stroick told news reporters. The wreckage was a mere quarter mile from the airport runway. According to detectives, Edward III had been piloting the plane when it crashed. Officials were unsure whether the plane had been landing or taking off when it crashed. Stroick stated that the wreckage of the small aircraft was in a compact debris field, indicating it virtually came straight down. 
The plane had reportedly burst into flames at around 11 p.m. after the crash and burned the back wall of a house. The police have confirmed that no one on the ground was injured. Investigators from the National Transportation Safety Board were at the scene that weekend, gathering evidence to determine the cause of the crash. According to authorities, the collision triggered multiple 911 calls, but none of those calls were made from the plane. In Edwards' obituary, Edwards was described as a highly successful business owner as well as a passionate hockey player. He shared his time and talents with many local organizations. He was a leader for the YMCA, Our Lady of Peace Parish, and Marshfield Water and Light Commission. The obituary also states that Jim fulfilled a lifelong dream in obtaining his pilot's license. Flying brought Jim a sense of calmness and peace of mind. Jim frequently flew his family to hockey tournaments and vacations throughout the country. One of his motivations for flying was to create more time to spend with his family. The bereaved family requested that any memorial donations be made to the Marshfield Area Catholic Schools tuition assistance funds. On the morning of Thursday, July 27, 2009, Michael and Danny Noel were speed walking through Red Reef Park in Boca Raton, Florida. At around 8.45 a.m., the couple who were in their 50s heard a low growling noise from the woods. Before they had time to run, a rabid fox sprung out of the bushes and sunk its teeth into Danny Noel's knee. 57-year-old Michael reacted quickly and grabbed a PVC pipe that was lying on the ground and hit the aggressive animal with it. The fox let go of his wife, but then launched at Michael who repeatedly hit it on the head with the pipe until it was dead. Danny ran to get help while her husband stayed where the attack happened and dialed 911. 911, what's the address of your emergency? Yeah, I've just been bitten by a, um, I think a red-tailed fox up in Red Reef Park. You just were bitten by a fox? Yeah. Okay. He's, I think he's rabid. He came out of the woods cr crazy. Red Reef I just Park. killed him, though. I have him here. You killed him? Yeah. Okay. I chased the sucker down. He bit me and my wife both. My wife just went running down the road looking for somebody. They may get another call. Just down the phone with me, okay? Okay. Yeah, he's a quick sucker. How are you feeling? I'm all right. Did he just, just he bit me in the bit me in the calf. He bit my wife in the knee. Okay. Did it just come up to you and bite you, sir? He was he was crowing and going, <laughs> and then he ran out of the bushes and he bit my wife. And then I grabbed a, a piece of stick and I chased him and he he bit me and then I killed him after that. He was he was crazy. I don't even think it's a, a mother thing. Yeah, no. We just had a raccoon attack somebody down the street, too, so there's something going on with the animals today. They might think it might have been this thing. They might have thought it was a raccoon because this guy was crazy. Okay, yeah. Sir, stay right there in the park, okay? Don't move. Well, okay. we're, uh, I'm, we're not at Red Reef. I'm sorry. Um, no, no, yeah, we are at Red Reef. We're in the north end. Right. So are you at the Red Reef Park, sir? Red Reef Park, north end, sure? yeah. Okay. Yes. At the north yeah. end? I parked in South Beach, but we're in the Red Reef. At Red Reef? Yep. At the north end. And this just occurred like a minute ago? Like five minutes ago. It hit my, it hit my watch. Yeah. I think it was the okay. same. We All right. had a uh, confusion. We'll be right there, sir. The right. firefighter is right down the street. Bye-bye. Bye. Michael and Danny's injuries were treated at Boca Raton Community Hospital, where another man, 60-year-old Vietnam veteran Stephen Guliff, was being treated following an almost identical attack. Stephen Guliff had been attacked and bitten on the calf by what was very likely the same fox just 10 minutes before it terrorized Michael and Danny Noel. Tests showed that the animal was rabid, which meant that the people it had bitten had to undergo a series of painful rabies shots. The next few calls could potentially have been predicted, but the warning signs were ignored. Tamara Bergoidi called 911 in June 2021 and requested for Oregon police to kill her pet chimpanzee named Buck after he had attacked and bitten her 50-year-old daughter multiple times. 911, where is your emergency? We need an ambulance and we need an armed deputy. What's going on? My, uh, my pet chimpanzee has attacked my daughter. She's bleeding profusely, and the animal has to be shot. Okay. It has attacked my 50-year-old daughter. 
she needs an ambulance. The ambulance cannot get to her because um, I've locked myself in the basement with her. I can't get out to get my own gun. I'm okay. on the patio. You're going to have to do a headshot. Okay. Is she bleeding? She's bleeding profusely, and she okay. needs an ambulance. You, I'm trying where to is she calm bleeding now? All over. Yeah, we've she, got, she did her. We've got them en route right now. Okay, is Terry Rowe in there, ma'am? We're sending a deputy right now. Hang on one second. Okay, okay I'm talking about right now. one because the eight, if, if the eight gets a drop on him, he's gone too. We're sending, we're sending, we're sending Pendleton as well. There's no, um, um, it's, uh, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, he's got to be put down. Okay, do you have pressure on the wounds? She's trying, I'm trying to guard her from a 200 pound ape, so I can't really put pressure on it, ma'am. I, um, uh, uh, and, and you guys are both know, locked in the basement. You're both locked in the basement, correct? We're both locked in the basement, yes. And they've got to get do a headshot on the ape. Don't say, oh, it's cute to come here. It will attack. The 68-year-old called police from her basement, where she and her daughter had locked themselves in to hide from Buck. The 200 to 300 pound chimp had allegedly attacked Brigoiti's daughter unprovoked. Buck had lived with the family for 17 years and was shot fatally in the head as he was roaming the grounds of the Oregon home by police by Brigoiti's request. Chimpanzees as well as other exotic animals had been outlawed as pets in 2010, but Buck as well as other creatures that had been owned prior were allowed to stay with their humans. Brigoiti had a pre-2010 permit for Buck so she was not breaking any laws, but that does not mean her actions were considered ethical by everyone. Brittany Pete of PETA said in a statement that Brigoiti had created a ticking time bomb by engaging in direct contact with a dangerous ape, and because of her actions and ignorance of warnings to transfer Buck to an accredited sanctuary, he is dead and a woman has been mauled because of it. Pete also cited the gruesome mauling of a woman's face in Connecticut in 2009 as a clear indication that chimpanzees are not suitable pets, adding that since long before the chimpanzee Travis ripped a woman's face off in 2009, it has been clear that attacks are inevitable so long as people continue to treat chimpanzees like chihuahuas. An attorney for People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals said that Bergoidi had long deprived the highly social animal of the companionship of other chimpanzees. Brigoiti has declined to comment on the ordeal when she was contacted by local reporters, requesting that she and her family be left alone during this devastating time, and put the phone down on reporters. In March 2022, an emergency operator received a devastating call from an airboat attraction guest in Southwest Florida. The caller reported that a tiger had attacked a 48-year-old employee. Fire County 911. What is the address of your emergency? I'm at, I'm at Wooten uh, Animal Farm, the airboat ride. And I think another guy's calling you. The man's just been attacked by a tiger. He needs uh, he needs a dust off. Okay, what is the address there? Do you know? Hang on just a second. Okay. What's and the address? You're at Wooten Airboat? What's the address? I have no clue what the address is. Okay, it's at Wooten Airboat Rides. Okay. And it's on US 41. Okay, one moment. And he was attacked by a, a tiger? Yeah, yeah. And okay. Still in, still in the enclosure. Everybody's safe, but you're going to need a you're going to need a helicopter. Okay. Yeah. Is is the male awake? He's awake. He's awake. Is, is he breathing? He is breathing. There's three gentlemen in the enclosure with him. I'm a guest. Okay. Um and is where is the male at? Is he still in the enclosure with the tiger? They are still they, no no, he's outside of the enclosure. He got out, but the tiger got him. Okay. One moment. Okay, what kind of injuries does he have? Uh looks like he's uh got arm injuries. Yeah, his his right uh left arm is uh pretty mangled. Okay, one moment. His legs look okay. He's alert. Okay, how old is he? He looks to be about 50 years old. Okay. Maybe 45. Okay, is the bleeding controlled to his arm? Uh, I don't see any vascular bleeding, um, but he is mauled pretty good. Okay, 
Is there, is there a graph so I can't tell? But uh, there's there's a lot. It's, it doesn't look vascular to me right now. Is it serious bleeding? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's definitely he's in danger of losing his arm. Okay. Hang on, guys. I was a combat lifesaver in the Army. you mind if I jump in? All right. Do you have something that you can use? I'm a lifesaver in the Army. I can help. Yeah. Okay. You have something you can use as a tourniquet? Yeah. Hang on. Okay. Real, real bad bleeding. No, he doesn't have any vascular bleeding. Uh, I don't even think we need a tourniquet. We are down to tendon, though. Yeah. Okay. Hey, calm oh. down. You're okay. All right. What is your name, sir? You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay, buddy. Okay. Um, okay. And look, both arms. Get on the phone with Rick. We're down to the tendon and the, and the muscle. Okay, on both arms? We do arms? not have any, we do not have any red, red bleeding. Okay. So nothing, it's not... Nothing to put a tourniquet on. Okay. Was he inside uh, of the enclosure when it attacked him? It looked that way, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and the tiger is still. Hey, buddy, just keep your arms, keep your arms still, right in front of you. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need a dust off. Okay, where exactly are you guys? They're they're on scene right now. We're in the back. We're in the back. They're coming out to get them right now. Okay, we got we got a police officer on. Yes, there's a deputy on scene, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna start. Well, let's let's let the police officer make the decision. I think uh, I think you are gonna have to send an helicopter. To out to where he is. Yeah. Okay. I'm not from here. I'm from Alaska County, so I'll figure it out. Hey. It, He's probably going to need a dust off. Do we need to start looking for an LZ? Uh, yeah, EMS will be your personnel call that out. Okay, they'll figure it out. All right. All right. Thank you, sir, for all of your help. A Wooten's Airboats on Tamiami Trail caretaker had just finished feeding an 18-year-old Siberian tiger named Daisy when the victim, later identified as Ignacio Mabe Martinez, walked into the buffer zone of the enclosure without authorization. The tiger's caretaker told Martinez, a mechanic at the facility, that he was not authorized to be in the enclosure, but the man told him, they are both employees there and they both have the same right to be there. The mechanic reached his hand in, picked up a piece of chicken and offered it to Daisy, who took it before dropping it and biting two of his fingers. She then pulled the 48-year-old's arm into the enclosure before swiping at it with her claws. A witness said Martinez reached into the pen with his right arm to free himself, but the male Bengal tiger, Daruba, bit down on it instead. The caretaker sprayed water at the animals and Daruba released his grip, but Daisy held on, so he grabbed Martinez by the torso and pulled until he was free. First responders found Martinez lying on his back with large open wounds to both of his forearms. Meanwhile, the mechanic had no recollection of being bitten by the second tiger. He spoke to NBC News about the incident. I'm going to take that in my head. That one fourth. Daisy bit his left hand after he pet her head. He tried using his right hand to beat her away. That's when Daruba clenched on. The other tire got the bite in that one. One tire bite in that one, and the other one. The, the right hand. I'm so crazy. I don't know what... I don't know what happened. A report by FWC claimed Martinez was apparently drunk when the incident happened. He told investigators that he wanted to pet the tiger. A social worker at the hospital he was rushed to also said the victim was drunk on arrival. Additionally, Martinez's wife said she was told he had the smell of alcohol in his breath. It's unclear if the worker's blood alcohol content was tested since it was not listed in the report. Doctors were able to take care of Martinez's arms without amputating them. After some time at the hospital, he was discharged and deemed fit to head home. Neither of the animals suffered injuries. This tiger attack was the second one in the county. The first happened on December 29, 2021, when a maintenance worker had also walked into the zoo area without authorization and put his hand into a tiger's enclosure. A responding Collier County deputy found 26-year-old River Rosenquist with his arm already in the animal's mouth. The deputy tried to get the tiger to release it, but his attempts failed, so he took out his gun and shot the 8-year-old Malayan tiger, Eko. In February 2022, Rosenquist's family said a team of personal injury lawyers was conducting an independent investigation.
An off-duty state trooper was deer hunting in Norton, Massachusetts in December 2011 when he accidentally shot and wounded a woman who had been walking her two dogs. The man contacted 911 for help but had trouble guiding emergency vehicles to the scene. 911, what are your emergency? I don't want to see shot in the woods. I can't. He was hunting and he shot a female. Yeah, yeah, I'm in Norton behind Jim Blair's house. Okay, what's the address of your place house? Um, I guess, what's, what's your address, man? 98 Oak Street. 98 Oak Street. Oh, I don't know where she is. What's your name? Um, oh. It's John Bridger. I'm a trooper who went up in Oak Street. Okay, John, take a deep breath. How long is she? Uh, Ma'am, how old are you? Uh, what did she say? 66. Oh, okay. I don't know where, where she's she from. Like, where are you hit me? I have no idea. She doesn't know. I have no idea. I can't see any blood. I, I am. Is she laying down? She is. Okay, don't have her. I don't know. Okay. okay. I don't know. I can't. I don't know, but I can't move. She can't move. Okay, was it a hunter? Yes, it was me. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. I, I, I can't find any blood. There you go. Were you hit, man? I don't know. She went. Take a deep breath. I don't know. Ow. Okay. Ow. All right. Let me see. Ow. 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 I don't know. We're right up right behind the pig farm. Oh, my God. Man, yeah, don't move, please. I don't want you to get hurt. Okay. Thank you. I'm not sure if she's hit or not. Okay. She can't tell. Yeah, I don't see any blood. No. Oh my God! Oh, oh Jesus! Take a breath. I am. Huh? Yeah, I'm sorry. No. Is there blood? No, there's no blood, ma'am. Okay. It's a small hole. I think it. Okay. What are you doing out here with our little orange jacket? Oh, God, it's a god. I don't believe it. She didn't have an orange jacket on. She was out in the garden. Fresh fevers. I just had a deer come by and I thought, I can't buy a kid. Yeah. Are <laughs> you all right? No, I'm not. They, they have an ambulance coming. Okay. And the police are you, coming. What, what's your name, ma'am? Sarah Blair. Sarah. Cheryl. Cheryl. It's Cheryl Blair. <laughs> Never in my life. But you, you don't see any blood. I don't, but there's, 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 I do. Okay. Uh, Are you out there with her? Anybody? Her two dogs. Her two dogs. Oh my good God! Shut up. Just I'm glad. I just want. We're gonna get you right out of here. Go away. We're gonna get you right out of here. Okay. What's the easiest way for the police to get out here, man? I don't. Just my driveway. Right through your driveway. Oh, would you? It's through the driveway. So my husband is from where I walk. It's Jim Blair, where she walks. Oh. Okay. His name's Jim Blair? Yes. And he's inside the residence? Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Please. Yeah. What was your last name? Bergeron. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. How are you doing? Show me, okay? I have, I just want the pain to go okay, away. Okay, yeah, I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, my good God. Tonight, it stops tonight. Can you just stay with me, okay, dear? Okay. I am so sorry. I know, I know, I know. Do you see any um, rescue or anything for No, I don't. I don't. We're way out. We're way out in the woods. How far out in the woods? How far out out in the woods? How far out? How far out? About a quarter of a mile. A quarter of a mile, baby. We even, uh, I can't believe it. Uh, yeah. Her husband knows where she would be. I'm, I'm losing. I'm losing battery power. Okay. I'm in the middle of the trail. I have a flashlight on. Okay, you have your flashlight on. I do. I'm gonna lose battery power before okay. long. It's not domestic. I have the hunter and the wife. Uh, I'm going to get you out of here. Uh, you feel good. Flashlight, trying to 
Oh, my God. I need you to listen because we have officers in the fire department there. All right. The fire Somebody department's coming in through there. one. Yeah, they already do. They're uh, coming in through 110? I don't know. Yeah. Is that right? No, I'm telling you that they are. Oh, they are? There's a pass down that way, the fire department. They are on scene. So you guys need to make sure that they can find you. Okay, I have my flashlight on. I'm just here with Mr. Can you Cheryl. hear some whistles or something? I hear them way behind me off of them. Okay, you need to do some whistling and get a hold of them. All right, guys. Hey, you, know, you okay this year? I'm going to go get it. I will be right back. Keep with you. Can you see the I see. Though? I see uh, some lights. I do see some lights. Can they see mine? I'm in the wood line. If, if you're standing at 12 o'clock and looking at the fire department lights, where are they? I am looking. They're, um, they, they're shining right at me right now. Okay. Um, if I'm looking at them, I don't even know how to tell you. I hate to leave her alone. No, you're not going <laughs> to. I'm losing power. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to I'm going to keep you as long as you can. Go! Over here! Right here! Okay, make sure you're flashing your flashlight towards them. Can you see me? Oh my god. John. Right here! Right here, guys. You have them? Oh my god. John, do you see them? Right here. John, do you see them? Right here, guys. I know you can hear them. Not just here. Yes, right here, lower up. A man's casual deer hunt faced a harrowing twist when he accidentally mistook a woman's two dogs for deer tails. He shot the 66-year-old woman who had been walking her dogs in the torso while she had been on a wooded path in Norton at about 5 p.m. The panicked hunter managed to contact 911 from a farm on Oak Street and struggled to guide emergency services to their location. Authorities noted that the shooting took place about 40 minutes after sunset when hunting was illegal, but the shooter reportedly faced no charges. The woman whose name was not identified was conscious when she was taken to Rhode Island for hospital treatment. No further information regarding her condition has been released. The dogs were reportedly not harmed during the ordeal. According to investigators, the shooting was determined to be an accident. The trooper's identity, who also lives in Norton, was not made public because he did not face any charges. Don't forget to like this video if you found it interesting, and subscribe to join us in the next episode of True 911.